Our top story. The world's eyes are on Moscow. Chinese President Xi Jinping has arrived in Russia for the first time since the war in Ukraine broke out. In Moscow, Xi has come with an agenda to solidify China's position on the global stage, to be the peacemaker in the conflict. Just a while ago, the two leaders began the much-awaited talks. In the opening remarks, she healed China and Russia's close ties, while Putin said the two countries have plenty of common objectives. Even before she departed for Moscow, Beijing has been branding the trip as a, a mission of peace, one where China seeks to play a constructive role in promoting talks. On leaving Moscow after his three-day state visit, she will reportedly hold virtual talks with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. If true, this will be the first time the two leaders have spoken since the Russian invasion in February last year. Speaking of firsts, the Putin meet is also Xi's first state visit overseas since cementing his third term in power. Proof of what some analysts say is a powerful friendship between the two leaders. The three-day state visit is a major display of solidarity with Russia from its most important global partner. It comes amid warnings from Washington that she might back Russia directly by providing arms, claims China has so far denied. With the visit now underway, the West is looking for an answer to a specific question. Will she play the peacekeeper or provocateur? Coming out of this meeting, there's some sort of call for a ceasefire. Well, that's just going to be unacceptable because all that's going to do, Mike, is ratify Russia's conquest to date. All that's going to do is give Mr. Putin more time to refit, retrain, reman, uh, and try to, uh, to, to plan for, for renewed off offensives at a time of his choosing. Uh, we hope... And we've said this before, that, Mr. that President Xi will call and talk to President Zelensky because we believe the Chinese need to get the Ukrainian perspective here. For Xi, the visit is a diplomatic tightrope. A month ago, China released a broad 12-point proposal to solve the Ukraine crisis while strengthening ties with Moscow. And during the talks, Putin said Russia is open to discussing the Chinese plan. <laughs> For more on this, we have with us Glenn Deason, Professor of International Relations at the University of Southeastern Norway. Thanks very much, Professor Deason, for joining us here on Beyond. Now, China claims Xi Jinping is on a peace mission, hoping to broker peace between Russia and Ukraine. It's ironical, some might say, given China's own growing aggression in multiple regions as perceived by the international community. But can China truly be an honest peace broker, given that it has largely sided with Russia in this war? Uh, well, uh, China has a difficult balancing act because it would like to be a neutral mediator, but also uh, Russia is its most important uh, strategic partner. Uh, but again, it's, it shows how complicated the crisis because in the in the war between Russia and Ukraine, uh, China would like to be neutral. It would like to have good relations with both the Russians and the Ukrainians. Uh, however, of course, the, the war in Ukraine is to a large extent a symptom of a conflict between NATO and Russia. So to some extent, this is a proxy war as well. And within this proxy war, uh, China would never let Russia fail because if NATO is able to defeat the Russians, uh, then uh, China would be next on America's chopping block. So, so I'm not sure if they've given any weapons so far. They, they say they haven't, and I, I don't have any evidence either way. Uh, but that being said, uh, if, if it looked like Russia might lose, uh, I think that it's almost certain they would give weapons because, uh, again, not against Ukraine, but uh, to enable Russia to withstand the pressure from NATO. So, again, but this fits within, as you mentioned, a, a larger uh, diplomatic peace mission, if you will. They recently restored diplomatic ties between Saudi, and Saudi Arabia and Iran. They're now pushing for a wider peace in the Middle East between the Gulf Cooperation Council and Iran. Uh, China's also promoting, uh, you know, this peace proposal uh, in Ukraine as well as encouraging, uh, you know, uh, Syria and Turkey to reconcile. So there is a huge uh, diplomatic push for China at the moment. So, uh, well, again, hopefully they will be successful here to get an end to this uh, humanitarian tragedy. All right. It's significant. You certainly believe, as do many others, that if there were 
uh, to be a situation where Russia looked like it was losing the war, China would perhaps step in to help it militarily. But looking at the so-called peace mission, now uh, we're hearing that uh, after his talks with Putin, uh, President Xi Jinping may hold virtual talks with the Ukrainian president. President Zelensky has expressed some hope in recent weeks over Beijing's peace plans. Do you think Ukraine will welcome Xi's talks with Putin? And how is the United States likely to perceive this so-called peace mission, given how many countries seem to think that this is China's disguised ambition to assert itself as a global power? Well, they're not mutually exclusive. I think uh, China benefits a lot from uh, standing out as the peacemaker because uh, the vast majority of the world do not want this war. They don't want the sanctions. Uh, they, you know, they they want to see uh, negotiations started. So it's important for China to take the lead in pushing this. Uh, but uh, of course, this uh, this that doesn't mean that it's only optics. I think China has a lot to benefit from peace there. They have great interest in stable relations with both Russia and Ukraine. And this uh, proxy war between NATO and Russia is also uh, not in their interest. Uh, of course, that being said, uh, the United States, uh, as you play, just played the video of uh, Kirby, uh, John Kirby stating very clearly that the United States uh, finds any ceasefire to be unacceptable, and they will probably continue to fight this proxy war uh, down to the last Ukrainian. So I think uh, uh, they, they will push uh, Kiev not to accept this uh, uh, this peace plan, but uh, uh, the, the Russians uh, they would not resist it. So I think uh, it's um, the, the Ukrainians have a different difficult balancing act. They don't want to alienate the Chinese who's advancing this peace agreement, but they can't step on their toe, uh, which is the United States, as you know their economy and army is being uh, kept alive uh, by the Americans. So they can't afford to go against the Americans as well, which are very clear, do not want any peace. So uh, any peace agreement, that is, they want to defeat Russia on the battlefield and weaken it, as uh, Secretary well, as, uh, uh, Austin has already made very clear. Professor Glendies, and thanks for speaking to Vian. Uh, my pleasure.